Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Junkyard Dogcast. I'm your host, Jordan Hill. With me is Kip Adams. If you are watching this, if you are listening to this, we have pre-recorded this episode. Uh, I'm getting ready to go on vacation. We'll be gone for a little bit, but we had to bring you guys a little bit of content and uh, wanted to make sure that you guys uh, had something to enjoy in the meantime. And what we're going to do is revisit the teams that Kip and I drafted before spring. It was our spring breakouts. Uh, if you missed that episode one, I would encourage you to go back and check it out. It was honestly a, a real fun time getting to go through and pick the players that we thought had a chance to take a step forward. Um, this wasn't necessarily guys that uh, had already established themselves. This wasn't stars on the team. So if you look at uh, some of this group and think, well, why didn't they draft this guy or that guy? A lot of guys we kind of took off our boards. We were looking for guys um, who had a chance to take a step forward. And as you'll see in a second, some of those guys did. And uh, Kip, uh, some of those guys we, we probably would have uh, rather just left off our board. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I actually lost a pick here, so I got a draft penalty. But you know what? I'm rocking my Mel Kuyper hair today, and, and like Mel Kuyper, you just got to own some of your mistakes and uh, move on to the next one. So, uh, you know, there's still some wins there, but, hey, man, we, we, we can't predict what the, uh, you know, what the portal's going to do. So I'm just going to own it and uh, know that my other picks are, are going to have to just carry, a, you know, a little bit more weight as we break down our selections here today. Everybody's got their Jimmy Clausen, so there's no doubt about that. But uh, we'll go through real quick in, in case you missed it. And just as a refresher, uh, these were each of our teams, and we alternated picks um, going through. Uh, team Kip was defensive tackle Bear Alexander, offensive tackle Ernest Green, cornerback Dalen Everett, safety Joe, Joe Nell Aguero, outside linebacker Darius Smith, and quarterback Gunnar Stockton. Team Jordan was outside linebacker Jalen Walker, Quarterback Carson Beck, tight end Oscar Delp, uh, offensive guard Micah Morris, inside linebacker CJ Allen, and wide receiver Yazid Haynes. Now let's start, Kip, just with both teams, with both groups that we got. Uh, you know, fans, I was honestly really pleased with the vote we had. You win it, but 51% to 49%. I think these were two pretty even teams based on what we knew going into the spring. Obviously, we learned a lot more over the course of spring, but what do you think as a whole, the two of us did how we wound up um, and with the guys we picked uh, just how things sort of shook out. I thought, you know what, we both have reason to feel really, really good about our selections. And I think that that's kind of how that, that pod went, you know, how it went live. I mean, we would hear each other's pick and, you know, just like a fantasy football draft, you, you look at your board and you're like, Oh, I was hoping he would last to the next round. And, uh, that kind of had a feel, uh, you know, that's how it felt, which is always a good thing. That means, you know, we kind of have similar thoughts on a lot of these guys. And, and you know, Georgia had no shortage of, of uh, you know, options as far as guys that, that we thought could could break out this spring. It's just it's what happens when you have such a talented roster. I remember, you know, toward the end of the show, we were just thinking of, there are so many other guys that, you know, we could still pick, we could still name. And, you know, we were, uh, there were just also just, you know, toward the end, we're thinking, you know, are, are either of us going to, you know, pick a freshman? And, and so it just kind of goes to show how much depth that, that Kirby Smart has on the roster. And, you know, obviously a couple of these guys uh, really, really, uh, you know, had breakout springs and, and you know, made at least one of us look good. But uh, I, I think uh, I think these were good lists. I felt pretty good about it going going into it and I felt pretty good about it after the show. We'll take a look at both teams. And, Kip, I'll give you the option. Do we want to start with Team Kip or do we want to start with Team Jordan? Let, let's, let's go Let's go with me. I think – did I have the very first pick? That's what I'm trying to remember. I think you I might think, have. Yeah, and so I decided to not go quarterback and decided to take a player that uh, really thought – was going to have a breakout spring, but decided instead to the breakout and and go to a you know a different roster. Uh, but honestly, I think you know before that uh, it was shaping up. You know uh, that G day, you and I getting there in Athens and and finding out that you know Bear Alexander uh, entering the transfer portal kind of became the news of the day, uh, and and so it was you know that that was definitely. Uh, newsworthy and and we thought that he had a chance to if not start just play a pivotal role 
uh, this season. So uh, he had a breakout spring, uh, but it just did not uh, kind of end the, the way that we thought it would for him as far as George is concerned. To defend your pick, I think I would have taken him with the uh, second pick had you left him there. So it was going to happen to one of us because he, he had such a great end to his freshman season, played really well against TCU, uh, then decides to leave. And, uh, you know, we were uh, definitely a little bit kind of scrambling when that news broke just before G-Day. But, um, you know, there have been rumblings going back to right in the off season. you know, I think around January that, you know, he may leave. Um, nothing came of that then, and then it winds up playing out the way it did. Your second pick wound up being a really, really good pick in Ernest Green, um, a guy that I think we were both pretty high on coming into the spring. He was one of the guys that was talked about the most his true freshman spring uh, this time last year um, with how he had come on and he was playing left tackle with the second-team offense. Um, he was a guy that a lot of people projected to be a guard, and uh, he came in and, and impressed right away. And then the injury bug just kind of bit him. Um, he was hurt early in the season. I believe it was a leg injury. I uh, then dealt with a back injury that required surgery. But um, really good pick. He and Austin Blasky battled it out throughout the spring. Uh, he winds up starting uh, the G-Day game, but then Austin Blasky comes in and plays at left tackle as the game went along. Uh, I think he's a guy that's in a really good position. Um, you know, I, I think he's someone who – very much like we saw last year where Warren McClendon and Amarius Mims subbed in, you know, split time at right tackle. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that this year at left tackle with uh, Ernest Green, who I think's probably got the higher upside of the two, uh, playing a good bit, but Austin Blasky getting in there as well. So I think that was a really, really strong pick with you uh, going with Ernest Green because I think he's got a very bright future going into 2023. Yeah, we kind of did, you know, we were waiting to see kind of where Amarius Mims fell into place. We had project, you know, there were multiple ways you could have projected it. If, if they put him at left tackle, probably would have changed things a little bit uh, for Ernest Green. But we thought, you know, if you're trying to get your your best five in the field, your most talented five, that, you know, Amarius Mims being at right tackle probably you know, gives you a chance to get a guy that you you loved last, last year in Ernest Green in at left tackle. So, that's going to be the battle that continues uh, probably in the fall. And like you said, I, I think it will be a kind of a rotational situation, uh, but that, you know, they might end up needing uh, Austin at, at center. He's, and we still think he's going to be kind of that, maybe that, you know, that's six man, this, the swing offensive lineman at, at multiple positions. So maybe he ends up starting at left tackle, but you know, kind of like where things are right now. And, and I kind of thought that going in that, that Ernest Green, you know, just based on what little we, we saw and heard last spring that they thought so highly of him that they were going to give him a chance to, to kind of win that left tackle job. He hasn't necessarily won it, but I don't think he's done anything to lose it right now. I, I think he had a pretty solid spring. No doubt about it. Well, tell us about Dalen Everett. That was your third pick, a corner that has been uh, in competition with several other guys and a competition that looks like will be continuing. Yeah, very similar to Ernest Green. Just a guy that, uh, you know, I thought – Based on him getting in there early last season and, and playing a lot of snaps, that uh, you know he had a chance to to go in there and win what may have been just the toughest competition of the spring, and and that's just because of the guys that Georgia's brought in at that position at the cornerback position to replace Keely Ringo opposite Kamari Lasseter, and I, you know, in the end you had Nile and Green, I believe, starting with the first team defense, but you know Dalen played for both teams. And and, it, and so it's kind of it's not even a two man battle. You have Julian Humphrey in there playing uh, and making a lot of plays uh, at the line of scrimmage as well. I really liked, you know, just how they would have played specifically in the G Day game because I mean that's really all we get to see in the spring. So we have to make kind of a you know a lot of opinions just based on uh, that last scrimmage. But there were other scrimmages. Just. I thought he stood out in coverage. He had good uh, timing, uh, had a pass breakup, and, uh, you know, had a couple of big tackles as well, had had good coverage. But, uh, again, I think it's just very similar uh, to Ernest Green and the fact that it's going to go into camp, and it may be a situational start thing where, you know, there might be different matchups that maybe now and Green matches up better. So maybe in the first snap on defense, he's in there. You know, what, what, what base is Georgia at in in each game? It's – you know, defensively, it's based on looks as far as starts go. And 
I think that uh, Dalen Everett has a good chance to, to earn a lot of playing time this fall. He's positioned himself well to play a major role. But is there a you know an established starter right now? No, but we kind of said that. You know, the, these cornerbacks that they've brought in these last couple of classes are extremely talented. You know, we haven't even seen, you know, you know, A.J. Harris is a guy that could still make a move as well. That's just the kind of talent that they've brought in. But, you know, I, I like what I saw from Dalen Everett. I can't necessarily say it was a breakout spring, but it was an impressive spring and a reminder that, uh, you know, he's got a chance to, to be a really good cornerback for Georgia. Yeah, definitely taking uh... – um, good momentum from his true freshman year and what little he did get to play and seemed like he was taking a step forward. But like you said, I think that competition is going into the fall. And to me, that may be the most wide open competition on this team going into fall camp. Uh, next pick was Joel, Jonel Aguero. I will say his name right at some point on this podcast, but uh, I thought this was a good, a, a high upside pick. You know, he was a guy with a lot of talent. Uh, that is just running into a depth chart that is just full um, throughout. I thought it was very interesting during G-Day. One of, the, one of the things I always enjoy, especially with the spring game, going back and watching the telecast, and uh, Matt Stinchcomb talked a lot about Janelle getting some looks at Star. And, you know, I think that's smart, um, you know, trying to find an avenue for him to get on the field some way, somehow. And, you know, I think still there's not that clear path because even – if you see Javon Bullard take that strong safety spot, um, you have probably got Tyke Smith stepping up at star. But I think he's a really, really talented young de- defensive back. We've seen them just absolutely stockpile um, some very, very talented guys in the secondary. And we may not see a ton of Jonell early on. Maybe he plays a role in special teams. Um, but I think he's got a very, very high upside, and it's just a matter of time. Uh, much like we saw Malachi Starks last year, you know, finding a way to get on the field. Uh, I think you could see a very similar um, turn and and a similar path uh, for Jonell, um, finding a way to get on the field some way, somehow. Yeah, I, I, I think with him, it, he might be helped out just by the fact that Georgia's going to have that star position. And, and so that's an extra DB on the field. You know, he's pretty versatile. versatile and, and really, you kind of look at Tyke Smith, um, Javon Bullard and, and Joe Nell. I mean, those, those are three guys for potentially two spots. And so uh, he might be learning from both of those guys at the same time. And if one of those guys gets banged up. He might be that next man up at either position. So uh, you're right. Uh, you know, this was a spring breakout performance. And I think if, you know, you're looking at that G day game. And, and I think he had a tackle for loss, a couple tackles in that game, uh, impressed when he was on the field, but obviously not taking over a starting position, not, you know, coming out there, I guess maybe like Malachi Starks did last year, just, uh, grabbing a role immediately, not able to do that, but, but showing that, you know, the potential is there. And if his name is called, uh, this season and it, it very well could be, uh, he seems like he has that talent and definitely looks like a guy that, you know, Georgia loves to, to have guys like that out there on the back end at safety. He just like Malachi Starks, just physically looks like a, a guy ready to play in year one. Tell us about your next pick outside linebacker, Darius Smith. Yeah, this, this, another, we're at the upside part of the draft where you just draft guys and, you know, just hope, hope something happens. And with Darius Smith, you know, it's still about, you know, how how much weight can he put on and, and how big can he get? And I, I think that uh, there were times where uh, he has shown, you know, the athleticism to, to really be a, a big time playmaker for Georgia. It's just about being able to kind of stay on the field and, and, and play on the on those rundowns. And for the spring, I thought. You know, they had guys banged up left and right at the edge position. Uh, maybe he could, you know, uh, come out there and, and blow it up. But honestly, I felt Chaz Chambliss did a solid job just kind of showing, hey, I, I'm still here. I'm the old man here. I know I don't have uh, five stars next to my name coming out of high school. That upside that everyone likes to, to point to uh, might not be there. But, uh, you know, I set the edge with the best of them. And I know that's what Kirby Smart uh, really places a high value on it. I, I thought he looked really good. And so kind of with, with Darius, it's still the that potential. He's still in, in that that area as far as Georgia's roster because uh, you, you look at guys like Leonard Floyd, Adam Anderson, who've played that position with similar builds. 
he's he's got that similar projection. Uh, we just have we still haven't you know seen that on uh, you know on on defense. It's been more of a special team still thing. So I think that's that's still an aspect where if we're talking about fall breakout players and doing a draft again. Uh, maybe he's in the mix for that, but uh, didn't quite put it together this spring. Darius is a guy that uh, had three tackles at G Day, and as we were talking about with Jonell, he could be in the mix for that star position as well because he moves so well. And you know, we've seen guys of his build and those outside linebackers uh, every once in a while play that position. So uh, uh, I think that's a good idea. Put a pin on uh, coming back and doing a fall breakouts because uh, he he definitely would be a very a uh, very worthy candidate when it comes to that draft. All right, your last pick kind of got a little interesting. You decided, no, I don't want uh, Brock Vandegrift. I, I'm going to take the younger guy, Gunner Stockton. So you take Gunner with your sixth and final pick. Honestly, it had a pretty good spring. Uh, you know, it was made clear pretty much early on, though, that uh, he was not considered one of the two, one of the two quarterbacks really competing for this job. Um, but he did draw some praise from what he was able to do in his second spring at Georgia. The G-Day performance was uh, so-so, 13 of 22, 144 yards, no touchdowns, did throw an interception, and was sacked three times. Um, so what, what did you take of what Gunner did and uh, even looking forward um, to what uh, he could mean for this team going into the fall? Yeah, that was my Bobo Hail Mary. You know, uh, I thought – uh, as soon as you you made the choice of of Carson Beck, that uh, my best play was just to go for the, uh, you know, the the guy that that connection to Bobo that you know maybe uh, in the G Day game it, you know he blows up, but at the same time, I don't think G Day is a proper representation of what Gunnar Stockton brings to the table because well they can't be tackled, and, and so uh, you know. His uh, development as a passer is is a work in progress, uh, and he's not going to really have tighter windows to throw to than the ones that he had at, at, at G Day, you know, against Georgia's defense. And, and so I think you know what you saw there is, is that he still has a, a ways to go in that area, and but that's that's really what you know how it works for quarterback development at Georgia. They ask a lot of you. And they put you up against, uh, you know, the best defense you're going to see all season. So, uh, you know, what I take from that is that, you know, he was not the quarterback that that took hold and, and you know, made a move this spring. But, uh, you know, I, I thought it was, you know, I had just as good a chance with him as, as I did with Brock Vandegriff. So I just figured why not go with the young guy because, you know, I just figured if he comes out there and shows out that, you know, maybe it makes it a little bit more difficult for uh, for the coaching staff as far as just making that quarterback decision. So at that point, you know, in the draft, it felt like a good move. I think uh, it's going to be a big fall for Gunnar Stockton. Uh, like we said on the other podcast, talking about that quarterback room at Georgia, who's QB2 this, this year? I mean, we have not locked in a QB1. You know, we know that Carson Beck is, is kind of that guy that's, uh, you know, uh, done a good job to establish himself there. But I think QB2 is going to be real pivotal just looking into that quarterback room next year and seeing who's still on that roster uh, when those freshman quarterbacks come in. So uh, big fall for, for Gunner, but uh, not, not exactly a breakout spring, but it was worth a shot. I appreciated the thought that went into it. I think it was a smart, especially to end the draft. Uh, there was definitely logic with it. Kip, before we go to a break and before we jump into my team, of the guys you picked, who, which of those picks did you like the most, just based purely on how they went through the spring? Yeah, I got it. You know what? Uh, honestly, uh, I thought about it, it being Ernest Green, and I know that it's the toughest uh, competition going in the fall, but – I mean, I still really like Dalen Everett. I just think that he's a guy that, you know, this is going to be a huge year for him. And I really like just what I heard from the the feedback that I got throughout the spring uh, was that, you know, he's doing extremely well and that they, they really, really see a bright future for him. So, you know, even though he's not a guy that won the job this spring, I know that you know, Ernest really impressed. Uh, I, I really like uh, Dale and Everett, and I, I really think that uh, he's a guy that's going to have a big season for Georgia. 
Take a quick break, come back, and uh, dissect Team Jordan and how that played out. Welcome back, everybody. Well, we will jump into Team Jordan, and I'll say, uh, Kip, both of our first picks in this wound up being bust. Now, my guy's still at least on the team, so it wasn't nearly that bad. Uh, but I went with Jalen Walker with my first pick. I thought he had a chance, one, to take a huge step forward in his second spring at Georgia, but to potentially supplant Chaz Chambliss as that starting outside linebacker. Didn't wind up happening. He had shoulder surgery before the spring. Not available at all. He was at G-Day. He was dressed out. He kind of went through the pregame warm-ups, but you understood that uh, he was not going to play. Um, so I, I still like what he brings to this team. I think he can play a big role because um, much like Bear Alexander, I thought down the stretch Jalen looked really, really good uh, as a true freshman. So uh, swung and missed on that one, but you know the medical charts and uh, the injury bug really bit me on that one. Uh, but I still like Jalen going in uh, to uh, the fall and what he can do going forward. Um, going to my next pick, Carson Beck. I mean, this uh, this wound up paying huge dividends, and uh, I honestly, truly, was torn between picking Carson or Brock Vandergriff. Uh, much like we were talking about with Gunnar Stockton, you understood there was a new offensive coordinator stepping in and maybe a chance to sort of reset the playing field. But I uh, thought Carson had really high upside. And, uh, you know, to be fair to Brock Vandergriff, I mean, there were plenty of times that people were saying, you know, that this day uh, Carson had the better day. Well, then Brock kind of followed up with his own uh, really strong day and maybe Carson struggled. So uh, I think it is still premature to say this thing's done, you know, lock in Carson Beck. Um, but I thought he did really, really well. Played well at G-Day, 15-22 through the air, 231 yards, one touchdown. Um, I'm real happy with how that uh, that played out. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll see because, again, I, I think this competition is going uh, into fall camp for sure. Yeah, th that's – I mean, that's, that's probably the pick of the draft right there. And you know what? Uh, Kudos to you. you. You were the one that that, that made the pick in a, in a pre spring quarterback battle. It is not a, it was not an easy one to make because we uh, we all thought each of the quarterbacks kind of had a chance. And uh, sticking your neck out there and go ahead and, and locking one in uh, paid dividends as it should. You know, uh, he he's the only quarterback that wasn't sacked three times on G day. So uh, that right there, I mean, that was, you know, it separates him just based on uh, that G-Day performance. But I think everyone came away that day thinking, OK, uh, you know, if this if this is our QB one, I, I, I think, you know, we feel pretty comfortable about that. And he, he, he looked really impressive. And then as he should, I think, you know, if you have a couple of years in the system and the game starts to slow down for you, you're able to use your skill set more uh, to your advantage. And that's exactly what Carson Beck did. And at the same time, as I said with uh, Gunnar Starkman, if, if we're talking about, you know, how G-Day sets up uh, as far as, uh, you know, playing to your strengths, it was definitely uh, built for for Carson Beck to show out, and he, and he did. He's got a very, very talented arm, uh, and the skill set is there for him to be able to make plays in the pocket when he needs to. So uh, kudos to you. That, that was a really, really, really strong pick and uh, making up for our first-round bust. No doubt. We had to uh, try to clean things up after a rough start. Uh, Kip, what did you think of Oscar Delp? That was my next pick. He was a guy that – um, got put in a big position during the Peach Bowl because Darnell Washington got hurt, um, played a good bit in that game, and uh, continues to have high upside. But he's at a, a pretty deep position for Georgia and uh, has a chance to, uh, you know, goes in really understanding that there's going to be a fight on his hands if he's going to get significant playing time. What an incredible tight end room. And, you know, again, Brock Bowers made his plays in G-Day and, you know, Kind of, it was kind of a reminder. Oh yeah, 
you know, this team still has Brock Bowers. It was that kind of moment in G-Day whenever he just started making big plays down the sideline. And, uh, you know, choosing another tight end after Darnell Washington goes NFL, you know, it was the right move, uh, just maybe not the right tight end. Uh, you know, we had another tight end to, to break out this spring um, in the loss and lucky. And I think y- you look at uh, that position, what Todd Hartley has done. I think you can't, it's not like uh, Oscar Delp isn't going to have a huge opportunity to, to show out this fall. And they're going to ask a lot of them this fall as well. Um, but from what I saw there, you know, during G day looks solid. I believe he had, you know, had a, uh, a catch for a first down. Um, they asked him to block on, on several occasions as well. And they're, they're going to ask him to do that again. If you're going to play two, two tight end sets at Georgia, Brock Bowers is still on the roster. And chances are you might be that in line, uh, you know, in, in 22 sets. So uh, it, he looks solid. I think there's still work to be done there. But again, we saw him in the college football playoff do an outstanding job pressed into work against, you know, a couple of the best teams in the country. And he did really well there, uh, you know, as well. So it's kind of this that, uh, you know, you might not see him have, you know, five catches for, for 50 yards uh, every game, uh, but he is going to help Georgia win football games this fall. Had one catch for 17 yards at G Day and had a really tough drop where uh, he kind of lost it in the sun. And that was Carson Beck's yeah. first incompletion of the day, uh, I might add, to uh, to bolster my pick from a minute ago. Uh, but uh, the next guy up, Michael Morris, I still think this is a guy that uh, may wind up sort of like we were talking about a minute ago, being a fall breakout. You know, he started second team left guard at G Day. Um, has continued to, uh, you know, has consistently been talked about as one of the strongest guys on this team. And, uh, you know, he didn't necessarily factor into a starting role, which you really didn't expect uh, at any of the guard positions. So Xavier Trust coming back and Tate Rattledge as well. Uh, but I like what I heard about Michael Morris. I think he's got a chance uh, to uh, factor in. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see rotation uh, on the offensive line, just like we did last year. And to me, he's one of those prime candidates to find a way to get on the field. He may not be starting, um, but I think that uh, the future's still bright with him, and uh, he's going to be someone definitely to watch when we get into fall camp. Yeah, Georgia loves what, what Michael Morris brings to the table. It's just a matter of uh, you know they, they've got some really, really talented uh, guards on the roster, and I think uh, you know some guys with experience too. I mean, Tate Ratledge – was the most impressive offensive lineman, in my opinion, at G-Day. And you now see him completely healthy. You know, after coming off an injury last year, early on the season, you could kind of tell he wasn't all the way there yet, just from an explosion uh, strength standpoint. Now he's, you know, he's he's back to where he was before, and and it showed in G-Day. You feel pretty good about him as long as he's healthy. That right guard spot should be locked down. Xavier Trust is a guy that, you know, initially started out outside, kind of like Micah Morris did initially, and, you know, found, uh, you know, a more comfortable spot at left guard. But he was still in a rotation for a a lot last season. And I think it could be a situation where, you know, depending on what they're trying to do on offense, that they can bring in Micah Morris as well. So I think you're right. I I think he kind of is right there on the cusp. And, you know, pushing Xavier Trust, that, that's not a bad thing for Georgia, that kind of competition. And, uh, you know, his patience will pay off, and he could he could be a guy that starts multiple games this fall. It's kind of wild. We've been talking about my next pick, C.J. Allen, since the night of the national championship game, which I, I still don't think I can really wrap my head around. I got to say, Kip, I thought I got pretty good value getting him fifth. Um, but what did you make of what C.J. did in his first spring? And, and uh, what could be ahead, even though he has at a very, very deep position for Georgia? I was I was about to say, uh, have only heard good things about him during the spring. Um, got a lot of playing time out there. G-Day was all over the field. Uh, I think, you know, we saw him. I mean, it just seemed like every other drive he was out there ch- chasing down a ball carrier. Um, you know, I really thought long and hard about making him one of my, my – uh, you know, game ball guys for G Day, uh, but I I think it was just more of it's. It reminds me of the depth of the position that even with you know guys banged up, 
he was uh, probably, you know, the, th the third or maybe even the fourth inside linebacker out there. You got, you know, EJ Light Lightsy coming onto the, the scene. You got Pop Johnson and, uh, you know, Xavier Sori as well playing in all over the field. I just think that's a, a position where they got a lot of guys in that room. And I, I, I think – I don't know if they're, you're going to really – have the kind of depth that they have right now in that room anytime soon. I mean, we're, we're talking about got you know, Raylan Wilson is just another guy that's, you know, we know that the, uh, he's got an NFL ceiling as well. Um, and we had bowls as well coming in as a freshman, uh, this inside linebacker room is stacked. I just think that CJ Allen is just, he just has it, you know, he's got future captain written all over him. Um, you know, if not this season, I just think he's the guy that's going to demand the respect of the room just because of uh, his work ethic. And it's going to be tough to keep him off the field. Maybe it's just special teams, but I, I mean, he could end up being a guy that leads that special teams and tackles and has double digit special teams tackles. It's just his drive for the football and that, you know, just the, the, the motivation that, that he shows, uh, it is special. And those are the kind of guys, it's kind of like Brock Bowers. When you get them on campus, uh, they're self-starters. It's autopilot for them. And he just has the, has the look and uh, of being that guy on defense for Georgia. My last pick was Zed Haynes, a guy that, you know, for, for the last pick, I'm still pretty happy with how that turned out. He had a 28-yard reception at G-Day and made a really nice catch on the sideline to make that play. I uh, went back and was uh, looking up a quote uh, from Arian Smith who talked about Z during spring and said, he's just quick. He's just a natural receiver. Like he, he don't have to get taught to like run routes. It's just him learning the plays. Once he learns the plays and learns the offense, he's going to be good. Um, I still really like his upside. I don't know how much he's going to play this year just because they are pretty loaded at receiver. And, you know, you can, factor in and you can ride out a number of different receiver combinations and say, okay, this looks pretty good. You know, you would feel comfortable with that. I don't know how soon Zed will factor in there, but I really like what he brings to the table. And I think when it's all said and done, as far as his time at Georgia, he will get a chance to play a really big role. Yeah. He, he's got that, uh, you know, that all round skill set that's going to allow him to probably play all, you know, three, wide receiver positions for Georgia, you know, maybe uh, if they're going four and five, you know, he's able to move around. I think he's just the guy that you put in motion and, and, and kind of let him go to work. Uh, he seems like he's really great at getting separation and at, I mean, showed pretty solid hands out there as well. You know, caught the, I believe the only pass thrown his way, like you said. And I, I think that as far as Georgia's wide receiver rotation, you know, that's by design. Uh, you know, they want guys to be able to rotate in and out because uh, they want to keep those guys fresh. They ask a lot of those guys. Uh, and like we said last year, the, the physicality that they demand, does it, it's not just on defense and it's not just a line of scrimmage thing. They, they want their wide receivers to have that as well. And they push those guys uh, to, to win the battle at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack as blockers. And I, I think he's, if he's able to showcase that, he's going to get on the field because he just seems like a playmaker. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think he's one of those guys like like last year with Dylan Bell, you know, just a guy that may not get talked about a lot, but is going to carve out a pretty pretty key role. And I think he he will be you know maybe in that too deep uh, at, at you know one of the wide receiver positions. Looking at this team as far as what I would say was my favorite pick, I mean, I would have to stick with Carson because of the spring he had and the fact that he did sort of push himself forward when it comes to that competition. Again, I'm not convinced it's over with, but I think he did a very good job of uh, positioning himself when it comes to the summer and then going into the fall. I will say, too, like we mentioned a few minutes ago, I really like the C.J. Allen pick. I don't know how soon he'll play just because – they are ridiculously deep at inside linebacker, um, but I like what he brings to the table and eventually what he will be able to do. Uh, when you look at uh, everybody we picked, uh, there were some obvious uh, guys we overlooked or really just guys we didn't expect to stand out like they did. 
Uh, so Kip, I'm going to give you a redo and then I'll get one as well. Uh, but you get a chance to pick somebody, um, you know, someone you think would have been a really, really strong pick for your team just based on how they performed over the course of the spring. Yeah, I'll go with uh, Damon Wilson. I thought that, uh, you know, given, you know, you can't project position health. And obviously, we, I mean, I think right after we did this, you know, you, you found out that the Jalen Walker was was banged up. At the same time, you know, just knowing that I talked about that edge position, I talked about the, they needed guys there. And, and the group they brought in, uh, Damon was the, I believe, the highest rated of the group. And MG Day, he showed it. Uh, I mean, he had a couple sacks on the day. I mean, we, we got to call him sacks. You don't know if he would have been able to, to bring the quarterback down. You got to complete that process. And that was something that, you know, you always saw, saw Nolan Smith. He seemed like he could get there, but, uh, you know, didn't always uh, complete the sack. But that's still quarterback pressure. And it, it, he was – Damon was definitely showcasing, you know, outstanding hands, great first step off the line, uh, was in the backfield multiple times. And so for, for, for me, just knowing how big of a need that was, uh, that would definitely have been a guy that I, I would have loved to have uh, on my, in my draft. That's, that was my biggest regret because he was definitely one of the best five or six players I thought on G-Day. Yeah, you would have worked to get him an undrafted free agent deal after uh, after our draft was over with. But uh, to me, I think I go with Lawson Lucky just for the simple reason that he was talked about more than anybody else or what he was able to do, how he blocked, how he caught the ball, and you saw a little bit of that at G Day. Um, again, he's at a position where who knows how much he's going to play, but he did himself very well when it comes to his freshman year. And it's going to be fascinating to see how he factors into the plans. Now, had I known what the injury bug would have done over the course of spring, I think that other pick could have been Roderick Robinson because of what they needed at the running back position, just how um, depleted it got by the time they got to G day. I mean, Dejon Edwards played very little um, and you got to see, Roger Robinson take a good bit of, you know, get a good bit of work because of how limited they were. Um, so those two guys make a lot of sense. And I think it's fair to give a shout out um, to Xavion Sori. I don't know if we would have necessarily said it was fair to pick him, um, though he did really take some strides. And I uh, thought he played well at G Day, stepped up and started in the place of Smile Munden, who was hurt. Um, fascinating to see what he's able to do. You know, I think. Sometimes we forget he was a five-star, and he's got a whole lot of talent. And Kirby talked about that just before G-Day, and I thought you got to see that with how he performed in that spring game. Yeah, that, that was a guy that I was considering just now. If if not lucky, it would have been him just because when you have Kirby Smart just talking about, you know, it, he's making it difficult to, to keep him off the field because he has a skill set that none of the other linebackers have. And when you hear something like that and, you know, just – an emphasis that Kirby Smart just puts on uh, mismatches, you know, trying to get explosives on defense, create havoc plays. Uh, it it just sounds like Xavier Sori was a guy that checks a lot of boxes for them from just a physical standpoint of being able to be a potential havoc wreaker on defense. And so I, I think, you know, you, you look in the past, you look at guys like Quay Walker, who initially was kind of playing inside out, uh, just, you know, in that star position, sometimes they utilize that as a stand-up rusher. Uh, it, Xavier Sori could get some playing time in star packages as well. I, I just think that, uh, you know, that, like I said, that room, it's not just numbers. It's it's talent in the inside linebacker room. And, you know, it, with it, Jalen Walker coming back uh, and healthy this fall, that's just going to increase the competition for playing time even more so. It's a great problem for Georgia to have. And I think Xavier Sori is, is, is an outstanding, uh, just even if he's a specialized defender for them, I, I think he's a guy that can, you know, per snap, be a big time playmaker for Georgia. I think he can contribute quite a bit, especially when you consider that one of the veterans, Ryan Davis, left and transferred to UCF. 
So, Kip, as we mentioned earlier in this podcast, the vote was really, really close the first time around. We are going to put up another vote. And I'll be honest and say I still think it was kind of split with the success we had. But what's your guess with how this vote goes? Who winds up getting the upper hand, Team Kip or Team Jordan? By the true definition of, of the draft, you know, breakout players in spring. Uh, I think that Carson Beck is the breakout player singular player this spring if we're starting to go on guys who just showed out i mean you know i I think that there are multiple guys that did that so if we're going on you know one point for solid springs and the two points for breakout it could be pretty close if we're going on a singular player versus an overall draft uh you know i gotta give the edge to carson beck but Hey, like I said, I, I think multiple guys on both of our teams impressed this spring, but this is a breakout spring draft, and I, I definitely Carson Beck was that guy that just kind of, you know, took the bull by the horns and, and made a great case for himself as, as QB1 right now. I think that the two teams are pretty even, but uh, Kip, I am uh, sad to inform you that nobody's going to vote for Bear Alexander's team. Like, I, I think the fact he left is really going to hurt your your polling power uh, when we put this up. Hey, listen, uh, it's you know Kirby Smart's all about the the eighty five on, on the roster, and uh, you know if a guy like Bear Alexander doesn't leave, and you know they're they're not able to uh, to bring in another guy. Uh, the the maximize that roster so i you know i think it it all works out in the end and there's someone on georgia's team right now that's thinking you know i might not be here if bear alexander didn't leave and and so for 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 kirby smart in georgia there's always a way to to pull that into a win and you know you look at uh you know the other guys that that broke out in g-day uh they're they're here because bear alexander chose not to be so uh, you know you, you always have to look at the you know the future and and that's how kirby smart is so you know the, when you look at bear Alexander, just remember that uh you know they still have uh, i think is it 86 officially on scholarship right now uh, someone had to leave and it may as well have been my first pick in the draft we're going to wrap this episode up appreciate everybody who tuned in everyone who is listening to this uh, thanks so much. Be sure to go to our YouTube page, Dogs247, and subscribe to that. Keep an eye on Dogs247.com, all the content we've got uh, rolling out as we go through another busy summer. Uh, it never, never stops for sure. But uh, we'll wrap it up there. For Kip Adams, I am Jordan Hill. And until next time, take care, everybody.